We are in the shop. It's been a couple days since I recorded, but I don't record every day. Anyways, so this was supposed to, uh, the red Peterbilt. We do have two now. This one came with uh, the new farm purchase. It is a 379 uh, short hood. It goes really nice down the road. Um, 500 horse, I think, something like that. I has a, I, yeah, I think something like that. Um, Oh, that's Ferdy with the the dump trailer. Anyways, um, the axle snapped on Ferdy. Um, this is not a 46 rear end. I think it's a 44. I could be wrong. It's definitely way smaller than a than a, our all our other trucks. All our other ones are 46s. For this reason, um, the, I guess our other Peterbilt has a Super 40 in it. Um, but yeah, he snapped an axle. We've never snapped one before on any truck. Anyways, um, Jamie, we brought Jamie Valencourt. He said he, he has all the stuff there like used, which he had an axle, I believe, but the part he was going to put into it used once he got into it and going to put it into our housing, he said it was a little bit more chewed up than he was comfortable putting into this machine. So he had to order a new one, so that's why that's backtracking. We got all the parts here almost far from ADF. New aftermarket head. Ain't going with cat. Um, and the whole engine kit. They already got new sleeves in there. And they would be a lot farther along, but we ended up getting the wrong pins that connect the rods to the pistons. Somehow that kit had the wrong set. It's in that little white box right there. They're too small. But besides that, it's gonna be, it's going good. It's a little bit of a mess in here. We have been pulling stuff in and out the last couple days and I need to clean it. So don't mind the mess. Anyways, Kristoff, Philip dumped a load of stone with this and Kristoff was looking and saw that the rear seal on this wheel is leaking. So just pulled that in. And we're gonna pull this, this tire off now. I got the tires off. Look at that lovely, lovely brake. Coated in an oil. So back to brake. Uh, brake slack adjuster off. That way we have enough room right here and we'll take it out. And my mom, she is getting the parts. So what we got here is a very squeakless brake. Yeah, no wheelie. No squeaking on this old girl right here. We'll clean it up. Now the reason it went is I think the bearings are bad or that nut is very loose. But we haven't had this wheel off. Um, I don't think we've ever actually had this. We've never actually had this out. We have brakes off the other side. And I've had this one out because of the front, uh, the front diff gr the blew up. Pull. But uh, we've never took this off. Oh, yep. <laughs> well, if it ain't one thing, it's everything. <laughs> so what we got here is those stupid wedges. Getting, beat it. getting the first one loose is always the hardest. Ugh. But, you know, a good thing is when you got a smaller rear and that one doesn't have wedges, it's just a nut. That, there is something fucked up in there. A lot of movement going on. As you hit it, that S cam has I saw that. been turning. Yeah. Someone is going to mention correct procedure <laughs> that's not enough swear right now. apparently oh. so, uh, is this the correct procedure yeah I'm gonna start hitting harder just so you know one or two studs a bare minimal all right we got one out there's a couple out 
Look at that, he's a champ. Baron's gonna be that guy though. You think? Yeah. For sure. I know, this, I know the seal will be bad. I guarantee you something's gonna be broken here. Whew. Birdie, yeah, that's a good spot. Uh, just need a vice kit now. Yeah. Yeah, right, we got those got new damn wedges. No, I think I might have one here. Um, oh, it did loosen up. The nuts loose? Yep. So that's what happened. It just seemed weird. Which I don't know why because we've never we've never had this open and we've owned this truck for... What if it is? Oh, we might have had it open. I don't want to. We it. haven't. We've never touched this axle. Maybe. I know we did the front one. one. Yeah, 10 years and no issues. It's called a... That's called that's a win. No, this is the fright shaker. She shakes a lot, but causes no headaches. Not true. <laughs> oh, it does shake a lot. That was good for the stud. Yeah, I think it'll be right. We should compare this axle size to that axle size. Right. Because it is substantially larger. Why won't we get this thing running today? Because we don't have the water the and stuff. Yep. What time now, the reason this all broke is there's a locking washer kind of thing. What the hell? And it literally, uh, they just... She shook apart. I mean, that's... Why it apart? Well, at high enough speeds, this thing is like a laser. It does not shake, but you just got to reach that speed. Yeah, you get to 45, though. Yeah, 35 to 40? Hold on. For dear life. Um, Your ass is getting a massage. Alrighty, well... We don't have one of those here. What, bearings? Well, not the bearings at Steel? all. Steel? No, I don't, I can go check. I'll go check in a second. Bearings, replacing. Well, Shit. the housing's still good then. So, That's good. So we got two. Come on, Ferdy, pull it. Pull it. Try it. Harder. Pull it harder. No, because that's smaller, so it, I guess maybe. We might have the stuff in the back. Alrighty. We don't want to break this aluminum thing because we don't have one of those. Alright. I think that seal is... Um, Holding it. Oh, there she goes. See, the reason I didn't help him is because I wanted Ferdy to feel accomplished getting that on his own. And now he feels so accomplished. Yeah, yeah I'll go to Napa and get one. Look at that old Tanya 6. Right? She's, old. she's alive. Look at that, she's on that ship pump. That's what she's. That's where she belongs. That's where she belongs. <laughs> and I guess I got a hey, couple. We got two 1086s. Yeah. They're both, on well, pump. both are ship pump trackers. So now we got a handful of new subscribers right now that have never seen all well, the spring work yet, unless they went back to old videos. If you were here last year, and there was a lot of you that were, this sucker pulled the 24 foot set of Harold's. Um, but uh, that we leave the duels on just in case something like that happens. Now last year was the first spring in a couple years that I had to come off the pump and go do field work. But uh, it's just easier to leave the duels on than take them off. And it doesn't bother us having them on the ship pump. So yeah. Now, I don't know how much Ferdy recorded earlier, but they went and grabbed my tank. My mom's still not back with the parts for that. And um, I got this tire off. Uh, they're all low on air, but I've got to do the brakes. Last year in the fall, this wheel, the brakes were sticking for a long time until um, I was doing, I had a hydraulic line, or not hydraulic, brake line that was leaking. I fixed it, and then I saw that the brake calibers were stuck, and uh, they weren't releasing, like they weren't going, returning all the way, so they rubbed themselves. This thing's supposed to be this thick, and uh, I got a new rotor here and new caliber and pads we're gonna change that out i see the bearing is um there's some wiggle i gotta go through all the wheel bearings on my tank now before someone complains about it looking like crap for getting parked like this don't worry i'm just upset as you guys would be because this was washed by well a former employee he is no longer with us as of a couple weeks ago uh anyways and yeah he liked to do half-assed work and uh yeah 
don't don't miss them uh, anyways yeah I'm gonna fix this up now well we got uh this morning Gerhardt's milking with his girlfriend because uh, the milkers asked for today off or they have the day off I mean um, so gives it a little bit of an opportunity to actually show this because Gerhardt is not camera shy I said you're not camera shy. Try not to be. You don't see him a lot on camera. Just because he is our herdsman. But uh that is and he's just not around when I'm recording because it just it goes like that. Not in the garage. Yeah, he's not in the garage. Which is where I do about most of my recording. So the procedure is you freeze dip, strip, and then uh, wipe. And we actually, at the home farm too, we split the parlor in half. So at the home farm, it's the first seven and then the last six, because it's a double 13. Here it's five and five. And that just allows to get as close as possible to a, a 90, 90 second prep time, so. From when you touch the cow the first time to when you come back through and put the machine on is around 90 seconds. It's a little quicker here than at the home farm because it's two less cows you're working with or one less cows with the other half. So at the home farm, we can push a button to bring up that half that you um, have separate. Uh, so it's a since the parlor is split there too, you press one button and it brings up the first seven machines after you've prepped them. Then you hit a different button to individually turn that machine on. So you just have to put the machine down. I uh, you can't do that exactly here. Yeah, um, we could. You could the once. Milkers just like it when they're in a down position for some reason. Yeah, the mil the milkers so I didn't like it, it down, but. I guess you can turn on at this parlor, you hit a button and it would pick the machine up and then it would let it down and you can put it on and while it, you're it's doing this one and letting it down, I'm pretty sure if I heard correctly from Bomatics, it would start lifting the next one to the raised position following it. So they're just kind of connected in a, in a line. So once this one goes down to go on, the next one would come up in the ready position. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how I heard him explain it to me. But the milkers didn't want that anyways, and they do 99% of the milking. So for us, we like it better coming down, but they would rather have it just stay down. And when they hit the button, they lift it up from there. Either way, they like the machines out of the way. I think that chain clip just broke right on camera. Yeah, we need a clip on it. But anyways, they they like that the machines are out of their way for all the prep work, which I don't blame them because everybody likes that because having machines in your way sucks to do prep work, especially after you've milked without having them sitting here all the time. Once we changed it over at the home farm with the new parlor upgrade, it was uh, very liked by the milkers. So here we just use dip cups for prep and for finish. I don't know exactly what the products are. Do you get? Uh, iodine for the post and peroxide for the free. Okay, so it's the same that we use at the home farm, just at the home farm it's a uh, spray, a little spray handle on a hose. That way there's no refilling. The dip cups are 100% better coverage than the spray. You do lose a little bit of time takes a little bit longer or do you think it takes a little bit longer than I do okay but it is way better coverage the first couple days it was a lot of training and pushing to get them uh, turning turning because it's just different looking parlor the steel is different where the rapid exit holding is and cows don't like change 
But, uh, they're learning. It's a lot better. Gerhardt definitely likes uh, the way we have it at the home farm better with the machines down. He is. We're, we're six foot. We all lean down to grab him every time. Yeah. But the milk, the milkers are more Abigail's height. Yeah, Abigail likes it that down too, because she's a couple inches shorter than Gerhardt. Couple. I'm being genuous. <laughs> generous. Gen generous. It's too early. But yeah, they got the this group done. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna feed. I was just waiting for uh, the gates to be done for the fire side, and I can. Uh, that way I don't have to open up gates when I drop the two loads of feed. I have, but uh, if I can wait for the herd to be done, it's easier. And they go back to the pen. We're walking back to the group with the cows. Alley scraper showing up 24 7 doing its job. <laughs> the tile works beautifully. It is uh been a couple days, so it's right about the time that they needed clean water across again because it starts to add a little film there. But uh, it's been a couple days already, but still looks really nice compared to having it just cement because that stuff the grit you don't notice it when you have a it's smooth but there's little dips in cement and bacteria gets in them and sits and it just grows way faster already can notice with the tile that uh the water stays way nicer so So Gerhardt start, or not started, Gerhardt pushed up the feed when he got here. Uh, I think an hour ago, something like that. But, we are gonna go make that first load of feed here. I'll have to push up the feed. Once they're done that group completely, I'll push up the feed one more time for now, just cause, but. They're letting the last set out in a little bit. I'll push it back for you. That's just a salt block. But I mean, most people know that. I gotta make a little box for that. And that way, if I can't push it away, and I'll stick it in the group somewhere, hang it on something that's out of the way. But yeah, when they get the group, they got their little scraper with them little foot and a half scraper I think it is maybe it's two foot um, and they clean off both walkways for each pen and they push the hopper manure in it's only about well nothing on the edges and three feet in the very center just because that V effect they can only have it get so close for right here Alrighty. I gotta give credit to this little John Deere here. About 28 degrees this morning. Honestly, not that cold, but still, four cranks and this thing was running. It's a little 7410. Not bad. Normally, I park it underneath the augers right away, like the previous day, but I had to keep it out of the way last night. So, we'll let her warm up for a couple minutes. But, uh, we'll be rolling. 
Well, we just wait now, putting the first mineral in. And we have definitely noticed that with these augers and having the drop down tubes, which we could have a little bit more if it was flimsier, because right now it's a six inch PVC pipe. On the very top is like an old car tire tube that just perfectly cupped the, uh, the auger to give it a little bit of movement if you tap it. But uh, it's kind of settled. It was basically perfect for the mixer wagon. You would just barely tap it. But with the ground thawing, with the mud season, we've lowered ourselves now like six inches. But as soon as that, the dirt dries up for the year, we can fix that. But definitely a lot less uh, grain loss with wind. Now there's a little bit you can see blowing, but nothing compared to when you're dumping in with a skid steer on a windy day like this. But we got a little bit of a wait to do, so I just sit in here, and then once I get about 200 pounds to it, I'll get out and get ready to turn it off. Yeah, Gerhardt, he's getting the group. He just pushed that crosswalk manure off. The alley scraper beat him, but it'll get it next time. He's got to push a little bit of where it kind of doesn't open up soon enough. He's got to push that to where the opening reaches. But it's not bad. And with everything comes their flaws. Skid steer hits a lot of shit. And you hope it always the operator always shows up. With the alley scraper, you gotta hand scrape where they don't open soon enough or the uh, the end. And sometimes you gotta fix cables in the sleds. So with everything has its flaws. So, I don't know, we like it. Cows definitely stay cleaner because it's always cleaning, we have noticed. But I'm gonna go put in a, I'm gonna put the grain in, or not grain, the grass and corn in. Almost forgot to set up the camera for you guys. Side swiping I gotta do is right on the end. That's mixing now, and I'm gonna go get the shoveling out of, or not shoveling, the leftovers, or the refusals, whichever way you wanna call it, uh, out of the way.
We got the first load out. If you saw correctly, the very first pen, they got milk. Not a single cow was even standing. They were all just laying down, chilling. I mean, as soon as the feed got dropped, they came over, but they were very content. Just waiting. We got the mix already done. Now we're just putting in cornmeal. The mix never has any issues. It's always flowing. The cornmeal, after a couple hundred pounds, I gotta tap on the bin with a rubber mallet sometimes. I've had it where it worked fine, but some, most of the time, you gotta tap on it a little bit. But it's not bad at all. These six inch augers, they unload pretty dang fast. At the heifer barn, we got a, a little bin with a little four inch. That one takes about three to four business weeks to get uh, the grain you want, but these suckers, they pump pretty fast. We gotta unload the second load now. But maybe, not maybe, but I'm going to uh, run into the parlor and get a little bit more milking for you because I'm not worried. They got plenty of feed now, but how to get that done. Oh, they just let another set out. This cow is using the manhole like a feeding or an eating spot. You gonna go back to the parlor girl? Oh. I'm hoping they're not done. They might be. Oh. Too slow. They got the last side on. Where's this cow? She didn't want to go in and I knew I only had nine. Like, what? She didn't want to go into the first stall. I knew I only had nine in the last set. Oh. It is a thing that cows don't like to be the first one in. They like to see someone already in there. Now you'll have a certain cow that loves to be the first cow and normally they will just on their own run in as soon as they see uh, the gate open. I don't really have anywhere to put this camera in this tractor, but maybe, maybe this will work. We'll see how it looks on the computer later.
just need to go all the way for that group because I had to back up with the first load. So we're just evening it all out. buttons in the cab is nice. Abigail, we got everything washed down. Parlor's washing now. They hose down the entire parlor with that big hose right there. And we're good. Well, that'll probably end this video. I'm not exactly sure how long it's gonna be, but well, thanks for watching. Till the next one.